Welcome to this third presentation on preparing for the literacy test, which focuses on the technical skills of writing. While students do not need to do any writing in the test, this part of the test assesses some of the important skills needed for writing. The four skills that will be assessed are text organisation, word usage, syntax, grammar and punctuation, and spelling. Again, these are skills that you already have and use. In this presentation, we will be working through some exercises from the practice tests available on the ACER website, as well as some exercises that relate to the different skill areas. As you come to the practice questions, you can stop the presentation at each question and write down your answers. The first skill we will look at is text organisation which requires an understanding of how texts are structured so that ideas are logical and coherent. Does one idea flow to another? What is the relationship between ideas and information in a text? Writers will use referent words. These are words like this or these, or they will use pronouns that refer back to people or ideas in a previous sentence or paragraph. Writers will also use connectives or linking words or phrases to ensure that there is this logical progression of ideas across paragraphs and between and within sentences. It is important as writers to understand the purpose of referent words and cohesive language and how they are used in texts. So in this exercise you are asked to rearrange these sentences into a logical order to form a paragraph. In order to do this, Look out for the topic sentence, any referent words or connectives to help you. So stop the presentation and see how you go. So here is the completed paragraph. The sentence order is 3, 1, 4, 2 and 5. The topic sentence is clearly identified. The second sentence expands on the first by repeating the word process using the referent word this and expanding on the ideas of the first sentence. Connectives are used in the next two sentences to first introduce about the readers, and then in the next sentence the pronouns they and them are used to refer back to the skilled readers. The final sentence sums up and then connects the reading process of readers to a goal in teaching. This exercise is from the second practice test released in July 2017 on the ACER website. In this practice exercise, the focus is on connectives, those linking words that you use to show the relationship between ideas in sentences and between sentences. So question 8 asks you to choose a connective that appropriately shows the relationship between the two sentences. These sentences relate to the technical support a teacher might receive at school. Now you might want to work through all the options and see which ones can be excluded immediately. In doing that, you find the answer is C, thereafter, showing the time relationship between the first support call being free, but for the next call there will be a cost. Question 9 is an example question from the first sample test. This asks you to identify any ambiguity that could be caused by poor or inadequate use of referent or connective language. To write clearly is an important skill that teachers need to have. As you can see, the paragraph is about a Year 9 history excursion. Read through the paragraph and answer the question. So let's have a look at the options. The first answer, life there, refers back to the rural community in the same sentence. These settlements also refers to the rural community. In answer C, they refers to students in the previous sentence. So that leaves their history, which is ambiguous, as it is not clear whether it refers to the students themselves or the local residents. So the answer is D. Another skill that is assessed in this section of the literacy test is word usage. That is, your knowledge about using words that are appropriate to a context. This skill area is important in writing as it ensures that ideas are presented precisely and concisely. 
In the test, you could be asked to identify the word closest in meaning and one that is appropriate to the purpose, audience, or context of a sentence or paragraph. Question 10 from the July 2017 practice test asks you to identify the word closest in meaning to the word paradigm so that it fits in the sentence and that the meaning is retained. As you can see, the sentence relates to a computer manual used in a school. Now there are a couple of strategies you might have used to help you answer the question. One would be to choose your answer and then check that it is correct in the context. All the selections are nouns, so grammatically they can all follow the adjective prevailing. However, model fits, as the alternatives don't really make sense in the context of an instructional text like a computer manual. So the answer is A. Now, you might have already known this and could quickly identify the correct answer. But to check all the options can be an alternative strategy if you are not sure. The next skill area assessed in the test is syntax and grammar and includes punctuation. You could be tested on your knowledge and use of appropriate verb forms, subject verb agreement and the correct use of pronouns. The punctuation that could be tested includes the use of commas and apostrophes and the punctuation of speech. The test could ask you to identify any errors in a sentence or passage or ask you to give the correct or appropriate form. Questions 11 and 12 are sentences on subject verb agreement. When you write down your answers, remember there could be a number of correct options. So here are the answers. How did you go? In question 11, there are a couple of ways to check. The correct verb was is singular and in the past tense and agrees with the subject of the sentence, which is the first, because it is also singular. Remember, the subject of a sentence will come before a phrase beginning with of, so novels is not the subject of this sentence. This is a key rule for understanding subjects. Another way to check is to reverse the sentence. For example, Blueback was the first of Tim Winton's novels that I read. In question 12, following this rule, packaging is singular, so the verb needs to agree with the subject. Here, has is the verb used, but it could also be needs, or if in the past, the verb was could be used. But in the second part, the subject, the goods, is plural, so the verb must agree. It could be are being, needs to be, or were being, depending on what verb was used in the first part of the sentence. Let's eat grandma. Let's eat grandma. Punctuation can be a neglected area of writing, but it can be so important to the meaning of a sentence. If the punctuation is changed, as in this example, then the meaning changes. The punctuation that could be tested includes the use of commas and apostrophes and the punctuation of speech. The test could ask you to identify any errors in a sentence or passage or for you to give the correct or appropriate form. Question 13 is a practice question from the July 2017 sample test, which is on the punctuation of speech. Now with the punctuation of speech, the words that are actually spoken should be enclosed in inverted commas. Looking at our options, that would be sentences B, C and D. However, the question is asking for the sentence that shows Mr. Black is telling Samantha to come quickly. In sentences B and C, they show that it is Samantha who is shouting to Mr. Black to come quickly. Therefore, the answer is D. Apostrophes are an aspect of punctuation that also could be in the test. These sentences look to be about a school excursion. So when should apostrophes be used? Have a look at question 14 and write down your answers. Remember, an apostrophe is used in the following ways. In a contraction, it accounts for a missing letter, as in won't, 
instead of will not. It is used to show possession or ownership for both singular and plural nouns, but it is never used to indicate the plural form. In sentence one, lots is plural, so no apostrophe is required. In sentence two, children's shows ownership or possession of the bags. It answers the question, whose bags? Therefore, an apostrophe is used. In sentence three, the same as for sentence one, packages is plural, so no apostrophe is required. Another area of punctuation that could be tested is using the comma. Look at questions 15 and 16 and write down your answers. So in question 15, the comma would be after the phrase, a hard-working group. As it is an introductory phrase before the subject verb formation, these teachers can produce. In question 16, the sentence has three items in a list. So there is a comma separating the first two, but in traditional grammar, there is no comma between the last two items after the word supportive and before the word and. The final area to be tested in the technical aspects of writing is spelling. As a teacher, it is an essential skill and so the test could focus on words that are frequently misspelled, that have regular patterns, or common words that have irregular forms. Questions 17 and 18 are on spelling. Please note the difference in the wording. Question 17 uses if the sentence contains an error, so there may not be an error, whilst question 18 identifies that there is an error. Question 17 comes from the first practice test on the ACER website, whilst question 18 comes from the second practice test. So, there is a misspelling in question 17. Exaggeration has double G. And in question 18, the misspelt word is analyses, which is plural and should be singular in the sentence. Analysis. Now, as we have seen, the practice items for this part of the test use materials with an educational context. They included a text on reading, technical support a teacher might receive, a computer manual, a Year 9 history excursion, a teacher talking to a student, and instructions for an excursion. So similarly to the reading section, the testing materials will relate to situations and issues that a teacher may come across. As you've been going through this presentation, if there are some areas that you would like to follow up on, there are a number of resources and additional practice available here on the FEA Landtight Support LEO site. Remember, if you require further support, please contact Academic Skills through Ask an Advisor or make an appointment with an advisor on your campus.